Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator of Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're going to talk about the self-destruct button on the ship. This isn't sci-fi. There is no self-destruct button on a battleship. However, there are ways to scuttle the ship. And that's what we're really going to talk about today. Some famous instances of ships being scuttled. Uh, possibly the German battleship Bismarck. She's being shot to pieces by the Royal Navy. Uh, she's a little bit too far away from the coast of occupied France to be recovered. So the Germans are worried that as all of their combat systems are knocked out, that the British are going to take over the ship, tow her back to port as some sort of war prize. Very common during the Age of Sail, significantly less so in the age of modern steel hulled vessels. Uh, anyway, so the, the crew of the Bismarck set about uh, installing scuttling. There is still a lot of controversy between whether Bismarck's crew scuttled her or whether the torpedoes from Dorsetshire are, are what finished her off. It doesn't matter. In either event, the, the ship was lost at that point and could no longer function as a ship and was going to sink eventually. Uh, so whether the Germans had the honor of scuttling their ship, because uh, those wacky Germans keep scuttling all their battleships, uh, they've scuttled more than any other Navy uh, and are proud of it for some ridiculous reason. I'm proud that the United States Navy has never had to scuttle any of its battleships. But there, there are other instances like this. Uh, oftentimes, like with the aircraft carrier Hornet, when she was disabled in 1942, uh, with the Japanese fleet coming on, the U.S. Navy was worried that she was going to be taken over. And uh, so they had their ships pump gunfire and torpedoes into the hull to try and sink her before the Japanese got there. As it turns out, they didn't accomplish that. Uh, American torpedoes were garbage at that point in the war and just didn't detonate right. Um, but they did do enough damage to the ship that by the time the Japanese fleet got there, they, they just put some more torpedoes in her and finished her off. All right, so now I am playing the part of Bilge Rat. And we're in the, the very bottom of one of New Jersey's engine rooms. Uh, if something happened, let's say the uh, ship was disabled in enemy waters and uh, there was no way of recovering the vessel so you had to scuttle her. How do you do that? If you set a charge in the magazine that could catastrophically blow up the whole ship and prevent your crew from escaping. The pocket battleship Graf Spee was able to do this off Montevideo in 1939. However, most of the crew had abandoned the ship prior to her putting out to sea, and uh, so they weren't so worried about collateral damage. The best way to scuttle one of these vessels would be to detonate sea chests. So the sea chests are through hole openings in the ship. So if you look at this huge pipe right here, it's coming through the bottom of the ship. Uh, this particular one is salt water coming into the condensers to cool the boiler feed water. So you need a massive amount of water. But there's uh, well over a hundred sea chests on Iowa-class battleships. Of note, as a museum, all of these have been welded over. It is impossible to get cooling water and other critical uh, fluids into the engines, which is yet another reason why we can't start the vessel. So, uh, detonating these uh, sea chests would be a great way of scuttling the vessel. Like I said, that's what Bismarck did. Bismarck had a number of uh, plastic explosives on board for if they had to scuttle ships that they captured. She was being used as a commerce raider at the time. Uh, oftentimes on blueprints for American Navy ships, you'll see a uh, compartment near the magazines listed as, uh, sometimes it's called a wrecking mine or a demolition charges space. And this would be where uh, usually plastic explosives are stored. And that might be for uh, detonating a wrecked ship that's blocking a channel or uh, could be used for scuttling your own vessel. So if you have charges like that, you're probably going to blow open a sea chest. If you don't, uh, Graf Spee had just done a, a pretty epic cruise, and maybe they used all their scuttling charges, which is why they chose to detonate their magazines. Or maybe they just felt safe with the crew and were willing to blow up the whole ship. Uh, anyway, you set those in some of your engineering spaces. These are big, wide-open spaces. If you can detonate a couple at 
around the same time, you're flooding a large part of the ship and you're losing enough buoyancy to uh, pretty rapidly flood the vessel. But she'll sink in an even keel, which gives your crew time to escape, uh, deploy life rafts if they haven't been blown to pieces in the wrecking event, uh, or uh, and, uh, otherwise escape or be rescued. So there are very few instances during World War II where enemy warships are captured, but in one of the famous ones where uh, an American task force is able to capture U-505, the Germans do uh, open up sea chests and start uh, trying to scuttle the vessel, and the Americans are able to go in and reverse that. They've got enough time to run down because they are set so U-505, the scuttling charges has a, have a long fuse so that the, the crew has time to escape, but the American boarding party, which had specifically trained for this possibility, were able to uh, deactivate that sort of stuff and close valves to sea chests. Uh, so when you're not using them as a self-destruct button, there are various reasons to have hundreds of holes in the bottom of your ship. Primarily relating to engineering. You've got to be bringing in seawater if you're going to be evaporating it into drinking water or into boiler feed water. You've got to bring in seawater as cooling water for most of your equipment. Diesel generators need cooling water. The uh, steam as it comes out of the turbines need cooling water. Uh, also, your fire and flushing systems run off of salt water. You're not using fresh water for those. So you need holes that are allowing water in from that. At low speed, you might have pumps set up to these uh, so that you can drag water in. But most of the time, it's just a hole in the bottom of the ship with a scoop. And if you're sailing at any sort of speed in any sort of deep water, you can just scoop that water right into the ship into large pipes like this one and then send it where it needs to go so that you can use it for whatever reason. Uh, some sea chests are also used to discharge. So for example, the water is coming in one side, going to the condenser, uh, being used as a heat exchanger with the dead steam, and then it's being sent out the other side. Likewise with the evaporators, water comes in, um, some of it is taken as fresh water and then other of it goes out with all of the extra salt. And your bilge pumps are draining water uh, out of your bilges and pushing it back out into the ocean. Some of these may utilize underwater hole openings, sea chests, as opposed to above water openings, which are usually like deck drains or... Uh, so the most recent uh, time that scuttling or sea chests have been in the news was when the submarine Ling sank a couple of years ago. She is a... Uh, quasi-museum ship in Hackensack, New Jersey, which uh, had all but failed and was closed. And uh, either holes wasted in the bottom of the ship and caused the flooding, or uh, a disgruntled staff member or uh, some urban explorers broke into the vessel shortly before she sank. And uh, they may have opened one of the large valves that may have uh, opened up a sea chest and allowed water into the boat. They're not designed to normally do that, but if any of this piping or plumbing is wasted away after 80 years of sitting there without maintenance, hey, that, that's a lot of water coming into the ship. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please don't attempt to scuttle your museum ships. Were you ever sent to find the keys to the sea chest? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. We also receive a lot of support from other corporations and especially private individuals like yourselves. In particular, private support has allowed us to continue making YouTube videos and making more than we ever have before. So if you like the work that the museum's doing, preserving the ship, keeping the sea chests closed, and uh, like what we're doing on our YouTube channel, there's a link in the description that uh, you can use to help us out. Also, remember, because we're putting out so much content, to like, share, and subscribe so that you're notified when all this new stuff comes out. Thanks for watching.